Hello, and welcome to a new episode of The Career Changers. Today, we are going to explore how to develop positive relationships in life, whether that is with your inner voice, intimate partner, family, community, career, colleagues, or customers. Our guest today is Michelle Hoffman, two-time international best-selling author on love, personal, and professional relationships. Her corporate career includes uh, helping organizations improve their client and employee relationships, business development director, and social scientist at Stanford University. Hi, Michelle. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, Elisa. Thank you so much for inviting me and, and allowing your listeners to hear my voice so I can see how I might help them up-level every relationship in their lives. Yes, and this is a very interesting topic. We haven't covered this specifically before, so I'm really curious to have this conversation with you. Good, good. I'm so happy to start, be here. So let's start with your background, uh, um, because we are here at the Career Changes. How did you start your professional life, or better, what was your first job? Huh. Well, I'll tell you what I think you want to know for Career Changes is a very early job that I had, and I started out out in marketing in a money management company. And I was developing the, the script and the presentations and organizing the trips so that the general managers could go out and make presentations and bring home what they called the big game. They called themselves the big game hunters. And I thought, huh, I see an opportunity. I wrote the script. I prepared the presentation. Can I be a small game hunter? And they said, no, no, you don't, you don't know the stuff. And I said, well, actually, I do know the stuff. And I invited the partners and the general managers to come in to the conference room. I said, just give me 10 minutes of your time. I delivered their presentation. And as a result, that increased the entire market because I opened up a whole new channel of clients for the organization. And then voila, I was very quickly promoted from marketing to portfolio manager. So that I think is a turnkey moment by seeing an opportunity and demonstrating that you have the skill to go for it, you can get the support that will encourage that career growth. Oh, this is impressive. So what was your dream job when you were a child? Ha. Huh. Well, you know, the job that I have now is my dream job, but when I was a little, my friends and I played a game that I titled, ready? What do you want to be? I want to be A. And we literally called this game Careers. And so we would pretend that we were restaurant owners. We were nightclub owners. We had a television show. And the interesting part of our game was there was always one of us who would take the role of antagonist. So one person would take the role and we named her, her name was Grace. My apologies for anyone having that gorgeous, graceful name, but we named her Grace because in our games, she was not graceful. And so one of us would take the role and be not graceful an antagonist or whatever. And the game actually helped us discover what it was like to be in different professions at different roles and with different challenges. <laughs> so that was that was our game that we played when we were little. Well, that's an amazing game. I think it can give you the opportunity to explore how you feel in different jobs. So yeah. an early career changes game. <laughs> right, it's the same game we play as adults, right? Yeah. <laughs> So what is your educational background? What did you decide to study? Uh, did your parents have an influence on that or did you by yourself? <laughs> I know sometimes uh, parents have a strong influence, so people may, may make sometimes the wrong choice because of that. <laughs> right. Well, my parents were always like, pursue what you're interested in. And so I went to college and I tried all the different things. I played the, the careers game. And whenever I would call home and say, oh, yeah, I think I'm going to be whatever it was, a scientist, a childhood um, career counselor, uh, an actress, uh, 
you know, whatever it was, they'd say, that sounds great. Anything you want to do, as long as you're enjoying it. Until I said, I'm going to major in business and marketing. And they said, that's right. Good girl. And <laughs> so they did have an influence on it because it they confirmed my decision. Mm -hmm. But I think I was always in that uh, that alley all along. So I have a business degree in marketing. And then I went on to study in Paris at the Sorbonne and I got an international economics certification there. Oh, well, that's interesting. So um, you mentioned the first job that uh, went quite well compared to the usual stories we hear of the career changes. <laughs> you got immediately a promotion, but um, how did you progress your career from there? So, yeah, it was very interesting. What happened in that role when I was promoted to be a manager was one of my peers became my assistant. And I've got to tell you, initially, she did not like that. Because here's her buddy, and we were friends, and now she reports to me as her manager. And I actually wrote a book on this topic, because through the years, what I learned was if you, every single one of us comes to work with our own core values, our own ideals, and our own mission and vision of what we would like to achieve professionally. What I learned was when I can align someone else's ideals and goals with my own in alignment with the goals of the mission and the vision of the business, we have a successful track. So that's what I did there. I quickly went into management. I worked in medical publishing for 11 years in management, all the way up to senior management. And from there, I became a social scientist at Stanford University. Of course, there are obstacles along the way, but that's how my career progressed. Um, and then I had a big life change. Uh, I had been doing consulting, business consulting, in addition to my professional career, and my personal life had a big adjustment because I had this dream that I would find the man that was right for me, who was my twin flame, my other half. And I actually, in the process, had come up with a way to find the right person. And it took a little longer than I thought. But when we met, we knew very quickly that we were the right ones for each other. And we did get married. And we did build a home. And we did build a family. And we had our own little universe, our own little life. And it was perfect until he died. Mm -hmm. That was a significant personal and professional life-changing moment for me. And I needed to figure out what was going to be my next career change because I was head of household, sole parent, and you guessed it, single. Um, and I've got two children who I needed to parent both. And as head of household, I was accustomed to having two incomes. And I'm like, what do I do now? Well, a friend of mine went out for a run who I used to go running with. He had a heart attack and died. And I thought, I don't know what to do. And of course, based on the story I've just shared with you, I do know what to do. And I went to his widow and said, this is never going to be okay. I'm going to hold your hand and walk this journey with you. Let's project manage this thing. So using my professional skills in my personal life. Uh, and so she and her children quickly rebuilt life and uh, their support group and their mission and vision and their goals and that sort of thing. So then everyone in my community was like, can you go help them, them, them? And I'm like, uh, no, I'm trying to help me and my kids and I need to go get two jobs. And they said, no, this is your job. Hmm? I didn't see that coming. So what I did decide was that I would write the guide I did not have. And then I would go get my big power job. So I wrote this book, Life Worth Living, a practical and compassionate guide to navigating widowhood and soul parenting. And it became an international bestseller. And people came to me from all over the world asking me to help them through it. 
So my career change became from senior management and from a social scientist at Stanford University to a life coach, which I didn't even realize was a thing at the time. And I was helping people through that. And then those career developmental changes continue. Because at that point, what people wanted more than anything else was to invite new love in their life. And then more than widows and widowers were coming to me. So now this is what I do. I help people adjust all of the relationships in their life. And as a result, they know how to attract, keep and enjoy the right love in their lives. So that was a big life change for me there. Well, that's an incredible story and a um, surprising one as well, because you didn't plan this journey and no, it no. just uh, happened uh, um, on its own in some way. So it seems like a bigger plan outside of what was your your intention or your awareness at the time. Sure. So um, let's talk about the importance of relationship. And uh, one of the most important relationships that all of us has to have, wanted or not, is the one with ourselves, and so with our inner voice. Um, and based on that, if we have a positive self-talk or negative self-talk, the outcome is going to be different. So in your experience, what is the difference between someone that has a positive or a negative relationship with their inner voice? It's a very good question, and it does change your life experience based on your relationship with yourself, your inner voice, your inner thoughts, and how you expect the your life to play out. And I'll give you a metaphor. Let's just say your inner voice is a coach, and your coach is choosing you as one of the teammates on your team. And if, for example, your coach says, Okay, but you're not good enough. You're not smart enough. You're not thin enough. You're not talented enough. You're not rich enough. You're not young enough. You're not talent. You know, you don't have the skills to do this job that we need done. Go sit on the bench. Then how does that make you feel? Because the coach, your inner voice, is reinforcing any insecurity or uncertainty you may have. So therefore fulfilling that prophecy of assuming that's what's gonna happen. And you go and sit on the bench and go, yeah, I knew this was going to be the outcome. As a result of that happening to us at a very early age in our life, we adapt strategies to make ourselves feel safe. We want to be right. Our brilliant brains are working constantly to ensure that the stories we're telling ourselves are true and accurate and will make us feel safe and keep us alive. So here we are in this example and we're on the bench and our inner voice, the coach is saying, that's where you belong. Well, then that's where you believe you belong. Whereas if you have a conversation with your inner voice and you can really talk this out, sometimes I use my hands and say, but what is it I can do? So what within the constraints that life has offered me, what can I do? What am I capable of? What am I enough to accomplish? Am I strong enough, smart enough, pretty enough, talented enough, mature enough, sophisticated enough, social hierarchy in my community enough to what can I do? And when you can shift your inner voice from being that negative reinforcing coach to a positive supportive a uh, teacher, trainer, and also like if you had a goal to uh, run three miles, 10 miles, you wouldn't do 10 miles on the first day. Your inner voice or your coach or your guide would say, here's how to start. How do you stretch your strengths and strengthen your weaknesses for proper balance? And let's move just outside our comfort zone just a little bit know that we're safe there, and then a little bit more and a little bit more. And soon you're running marathons, half marathons, and you're feeling so good about yourself that you're willing to take that extra leap, that extra step to go outside your comfort zone. And therefore, that's the strategy you've adapted to feel safe and confident and know a way to help move you forward. So that's how you shift a negative 
uh, inner voice to a positive inner voice and how powerful that can change your life. Hmm. So um, why is it important to have a positive relationship with our inner voice to be successful in our careers and life? Uh, you, you went through this in some ways now, but I guess it's also related to avoiding self-sabotage uh, or not realizing our own potential. Well, it's true because... And I'm going to I'm going to add on to your inquiry based on what do you want your life balance to be? Because if you can set a goal and then, uh, you know, put the tactics in place to achieve that goal. So the stepping stones, you can network to make sure that you've got the support team in place so that there's no failing. That's how you're then going to achieve your personal and your professional goals. But what happens quite often is that people will become so successful professionally that, and there's so much feedback in a positive professional environment, but sometimes that kind of quantitative success puts us in a situation where we may forget how to have a personal relationship. And that goes back to the life balance because to have a full and happy life really is to put balance in between your professional successes and your personal successes. So oftentimes people will come to me very successful professionally, but for whatever reason, they haven't pursued their personal life because it doesn't give them that same sense of accomplishment and fulfillment. That's that's the balance. That's how to bring in balance so that you really do enjoy your entire life. Mm, that's interesting. Um, so once we have sorted our uh, inner voice and let's say we have a positive self-talk, uh, we also need to look outside ourselves. And so as you mentioned, other relationship that we have, and that can be uh, with our family, with a partner, at work, with our clients. So if we start to go over one by one, first of all, uh, how important is to have a supportive partner in our lives that uh, help us to uh, reach our goals? Um, and, um, you know, I think, well, is it really important to have a healthy relationship in that way? <laughs> Absolutely. So here, there's so much... Uh, of a push right now. And, you know, we call it self-love for women in transition, but it's really, you know, first people say, I want to love myself first. Yes, this is, this is vital. But then they wonder why am I not having an incredible relationship with someone else? I love myself so much. And what I would say in response to that is the only way that you can have a relationship with someone else is to invite someone else into the relationship. And when you connect with other people, and there's different levels of that, you learn what you prioritize and value in a relationship, and then higher level, you can learn what you value and prioritize in an intimate partnership. I say that there are three primary steps to know how to attract, keep, and enjoy the right love in your life. And if you'd like, I'll give you those three highlights. If, if you learn nothing else from me as a relationship coach, but when you're looking for your right partner, it's easier to find a needle in a haystack when you have some idea of what that needle looks like. So in this case, you don't need to know exactly who this person is going to be, but to understand on a very deep level, who are you now in the world and who would you like to attract into your life? And in part, step one, that's gonna be based on where you're at in life, who you are in this world and who you'd like to become. What we're looking for for you is someone who's at a similar intersection, who's on a similar path. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. Putting that as step one is absolutely key to success. Step two is understanding your core value system because every decision that you make is based on the values and the priorities that you set in your life. When you are matching yourself with someone who's outside of your core value system, there's constant misalignment and dissatisfaction between these two people. So if you know that you're looking for someone and they don't have to be the same values, just comparable values, 
Maybe you want to invite more adventure into your life. Maybe you appreciate humor, family. Um, maybe faith is the most important thing to you. Or maybe independence and living in the moment is. But understanding your values and the values of the person you'd like to invite in is absolutely key. The third layer is faith, family, fitness, fun, physical, finance, career, intellect, philosophy, culture, those items. And the biggest mistake that people make in relationships is they put that layer first. Oh, wow, she's gorgeous. I need her as my girlfriend. Oh, he's hot. He's the one for me. They're rich. That's what I want. And if you put that as the first and only priority, it's very unlikely the rest lines up. It's possible, but it's unlikely. So that's how to have a relationship with someone else. And I think your question was really, you know, how important is it to have a supportive partner in your life? You can maintain your individuality uh, in a partnership, but together you've created your own relationship universe. And that's what's so gorgeous about being in a healthy relationship. And in that relationship partnership universe, if you've got someone who's pulling your energy, then you're gonna lose your luster and excitement and you may give everything that you can, but if you give more than you have to give or they're taking more than you have to give, there's nothing left for you of you and your individuality gets usurped, and that's not a healthy, supportive partnership. So you could lose yourself in that. Finding a partner who wants you to succeed, who you want to succeed, is one of the most amazing moments and experiences that anyone can live and enjoy in life. Mm -hmm. Well, the way you say it, uh, you know, it's difficult to not believe that because I can see how you actually project that energy. So, um, yes, uh, I guess you, you've been through this experience fully. Uh, so once we have a great relationship uh, uh, with our partner, then uh, we also have to deal with the family. And we have, we have a relationship that we didn't choose. We were born into so how can we improve our relationship uh, with our family? So I believe there's two types of family, family related by blood and family related by love. You're talking about family related by blood. So here's the big key. We have this idea that family related by blood, each of those people have a title and a role and we project onto them what we believe a person in that title, in that role, how they should behave and what they should do to fulfill our destiny. When they don't meet those expectations, we're disappointed, we're let down, and we're, we're hard pressed to you know, move forward and reciprocate. And that's again, how relationships go out of alignment. In these types of situations, what I think it's important to remember, going back to the core value system, is that somebody who has a different set of values is going to make different decisions and choices in their life. And what I suggest is do not seek approval from someone outside your core value system. That's not to say you shouldn't enjoy them and appreciate them. I say, see them for who they are. A cat is a cat. Meet them where they're at and don't expect them to be something other than that. So when you know who these people are, regardless of their role and title, you can see what's good about them, what's valuable about them, what their skills are, what lights them up, and how to bring them closer into your life without making yourself vulnerable. And that's one of the key ways to have exceptional relationships with everyone in your family, even if they are people who make decisions based on a different core value system. Hmm. 
So we have some more, a uh, few more questions. The time is running quick, uh, but if we can try to answer to some of them, how can we build positive relationship at work? Uh, I think that uh, there may be some specific challenges related to those type of relationship. So here's another situation where you didn't get to choose who you're spending your time, energy, and effort to succeed, and you didn't get to choose these people. But remember what I was saying earlier, each of us comes into every situation with our core value system. And again, my everyone who's worked for me, they were so happy with my success of my first book, but they said, when are you gonna write the book we've been asking you to write? So I wrote that, it's New Management Blueprint, How to Spark Talent, Ignite Winning Teams, Creating Valuable Results. And this is exactly what you're saying and referring to in that if you understand what their goals and objectives are, and you can line them up with yours and the departments and the vision of the business, everything's in alignment and the efforts they make to improve themselves will then contribute to the success of the business. And that's how you will create a winning team. So you went through your story before you went through um, a difficult moment in your life and that is what changed everything for you and then you had this new career. Well, each of us with our choices can have a positive impact in the world. How do you feel you are making the world a better place through your work? Oh, so good. Every single day I get the feedback because I get pictures and love notes from people who had never felt love before. And now their boyfriend is bringing them to Greece for lunch to celebrate their birthday. Or um, one woman just sent me a picture of her and her fiance, they just got engaged. And she came to me, she, she was a widow. And she said, I just spent so much time in the shower crying because I didn't want my family and friends to see how hard it was to move through grief and loss and move forward. So the pictures that I get back, the invitations, the exulting love affairs that I get to be witness to definitely reinforce that the contributions that I'm making in the world are such that we're helping to uplevel every relationship personally and professionally. Mm. So based on your experience and on your journey, what advice would you give to anyone during their journey to self-realization? What advice would I give to someone else on the journey? Yes. Um, keep moving forward. It's okay to make mistakes. Go forward with the best information that you have right now because that's your A game. That's the best you've got in the moment. And keep on learning because you'll continue to hone that uh, that story, that experience, that skill level. And that's going to be what informs you as to where to go next and how to do that with more grace, more ease, streamline the operations and actually have greater results from it. And then the last question, if you could give yourself a piece of advice, what would you say instead to your younger self? Well, it's interesting that you asked that question. I... I say, what would I like, you know, what would my future self say to me? What would I say to my younger self? And just, just what I was saying before, life is better with good love in it. You know, realize what's vital, what are your priorities, what's important, and let go of the things that are, are irrelevant because you are valued and valuable. You've got a big mission to enjoy in this world. So go have fun doing it. Well, thank you, Michelle, for joining us today and sharing your inspirational story and wisdom with our listeners. And if you would like to add, if anyone would like to reach out to you, how and where they can find you. The easiest way to reach out to me is through my website, theartofrelationshipping.com. Thank At theartofrelationshipping.com, there's lots of free resources and you can even click on a link and I'll see how I can help you with all the relationships in your life. That's great. And well, a last message for our listeners. If you enjoyed this episode, remember to subscribe to our channel and leave a review of the Career Changer podcast. Thank you.